Jared, uh, the, the PTTA, the Pekiti Turisha Tactical Association, mm -hmm. has members from all around the world. Mm -hmm. Tell us about some of the martial backgrounds of, of members of... Uh, <laughs> you, you name it, pretty much. I mean, we've got world-class Taekwondo um, instructors from Korean military units. We've got black belts in Brazil of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Vale Tudo um, uh, uh, systems. Um, I mean, you pretty much German Jiu-Jitsu um, uh, instructors, guys of high level. So we've got people from pretty much any martial art you can name that has come to train in, in Pekiti Tershikali. And you've got two two guys here with we you. Do. We yes. do, yeah. Come on in, guys. <laughs> All right, maybe yes, a, a brief introduction. Yeah, so um, this is Jake Brosnan. Okay, Jake is one of our Lakangurus here in the state of Utah. And What's Lakanguru? Lakanguru is the, the first instructor level. Um, and generally, for a new a new person to Pekiti Tershikali, it's a culmination of about six years of training. Um, people that have some experience can kind of accelerate that sometimes, but you know, um, so yeah, and he got a background in, well, you, you can what's, tell. What's your background? Tell us about your martial journey. I started the way most people did in Taekwondo, right? Because it's everywhere. Uh, so I, I started there and then got introduced to Hapkido and then got introduced to Dose Perez Escrima and just kind of branched out. And over the years, I met a lot of fantastic people. I love training. Um, and for me, it's just, I, I want to keep learning. So I'm always looking for new things. And when I met Jared and got hooked up with the, the community was really what brought me in too, because everybody was so welcoming. Um, there wasn't a whole lot of ego, no really, nobody, there wasn't a lot of uh, uh, puffery, let's say. Everybody was very welcoming <laughs> and very humble. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Everybody was very kind and welcoming. So I, I latched onto this right away and just loved adding it into what I was already doing. And as you continued that and, and began your exploration, what about Pekiti in particular, or perhaps Jared in particular, um, you know, made you stay? Uh, well, <laughs> here's the thing is I really liked, um, I really liked hitting people with sticks. <laughs> this space. Um, and, and getting hit with sticks. Well, you know, here's the thing is because after you get to a certain point in a martial arts system, it's really easy to kind of become the armchair master, right? Where you, you don't really push yourself anymore and you focus mostly on the business and you just kind of get stagnant. And if you don't keep pushing yourself, you do lose the skill. If you don't use it, you do lose it. So um, I like the ability that I have a community of people now that we can get together and beat the tar out of each other and hug it out afterwards. Like that's just been fantastic for me to develop. Right on. And what about what about you? Your, your journey. My journey. My journey. I started. Uh, I started in 1990 in Kenpo Karate, uh, one of the local schools in the booming metropolis of Green River, Wyoming. Uh, yeah, the entire state is just very, very limited as far as population and whatnot. But um, after years and years and getting again further up in rank, found that system very lacking in its application of weapons and its defense against weapons and had a friend also that was very involved in that and we kind of started trying to construct our own weapon system and looking at different FMA systems and, uh, and, and trying to graft that onto the Kenpo system but kind of hit a deadhead and then through some twist of fate came across some flyers and that and ended up running into uh, Tuhan Jared here and once we got a hold of that we went back all this material we'd work we just kind of pitched it to the side and you know, just through the uh, the elegance of uh, Bikiti Tertia and the the, uh, the you know the the brutal simplicity of it, just latched onto it and stuck with it and uh, trained with him for years and years and years under it, and began you know applying those principles and working them into our our Kenpo practice and and just kind of gradually over time it it's it's really come to dominate it and and and. I would say now more more of a Pekiti Tertia than, than a Kenpo guy because it's just, it's like he was saying, the, the, the broad breadth of it, the scope, the depth of the system is, it kind of grabs you and just pulls you in. You, you never stop learning. J Jared, um, <clears throat> getting back to you, uh, you do travel the world quite a bit. What are some other, uh, you know, reasons that you've heard others uh, mention why they, they gravitate to this? Well, um, I, I guess if I'm talking specifically about because uh, about the, the PTTA, the Pekiti Tertia Tactical Association, we really try and foster a, a, a learning environment, an environment where egos at the door, 
everyone's here to learn, we're here to train hard, we're here to, to, to progress and um, we, we try and stay away from hierarchy and, and um, we, we try and attract like personalities so we, um, we're, the, 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 um, the the brotherhood within brother sisterhood within the the, the, the organization really fosters a learning environment um, and so I think that's you know that's one of the big the big things that, that attracts people um, but also the fact one of the things that are one of our initial I guess um, uh, missions within the Piketty Tertiary Attack Association was uh, police and military that in fact originally when I was a full-time police officer and I was and I was contracted to train Army Special Forces units it was just a police and military organization. I never really envisioned it growing um, broader than that, but uh, out of the demand and a lot of my, for example, I started doing seminars in Germany and some of our main instructors there are um, police instructors and, and MEK or, or, or SWAT guys, and, but they also have clubs on the side teaching Kali, teaching other martial arts, and so they wanted to pass that knowledge on to their students, and so we started opening it up gradually and all around the world to um, so but because of where our roots are we have a focus on not just learning the art itself but trying to study and, and understand the application of the art in a defensive scenario whether it be you know different missions you know police law enforcement security personnel self-defense scenarios protecting myself and my, my, my loved ones and so we kind of where we're founded I think gives a lot of uh, people can see that we put a lot of we put a lot, a lot of focus on the fun of the art right people just you know the, uh, but also on the function of the art and i think that is something that attracts uh, people too yeah